Welcome everybody, Josh the RV Nerd with Bish's RV here at my uh, Coldwater, Michigan hometown store today and the sun just came out. Oh, that is glorious. It's been like right on the edge of chilly today, but uh, a coat or a vest makes you too hot. You know that weird in-betweener weather where nothing's comfortable? That's what's been happening. Anyway, behind us here, the 2700 BH uh, Cougar Sport. This thing came in like a Miley Cyrus wrecking ball last year and has made a lot of families happy. But, but why is that? Like at a glance, you've seen floor plans like this before. The, the, the one thing that it, they did here that I think really kind of helps separate and define it is they gave it a triple double bunk. Each 300, well, the, the two upper bunks are 300 pound rated. The bottom bunk is the floor. If you can manage to overload that, frankly, I'm impressed. I'm not even upset about it. Uh, the thing is that bottom bunk doesn't have to be a bunk. You could take that out of there and use it like outside cargo or storage. And frankly, none of those bunks are really structural in terms of like how the RV holds together. So. If you wanted to like take one or two of those out to make bigger bed spaces for bigger kids like a, a literal mother-in-law suite or you know anything like that you could or you could take all three out create a really cool private office space that has plenty of lighting and power outlets all over there which i think is kind of cool they've changed up their slide flooring this year for the 24s and they made it match the main floor although there's a little janky thing with that that i'm going to point out and that's the thing i'm going to show you where this rv is good and maybe not good along the way like a volunteer here that the road mode on this you are going Going to lose the bunks in transit unless you open up the slide and that's a problem for some folks so let's go ahead and get that out of the way in the meantime though you do have the new uh, improved keystone solar package every it now has a bigger standard charge controller and 10 percent more uh solar wattage than it had last year so has a good hot cold weather package uh 3, pound towing hitch system on the back so if you want to put a little enclosed trailer or you know like uh you want to mount some e-bikes or bike racks or something the back of this it's all set to do that kind of stuff it really checks some nice boxes and this rv you know like any rv frankly it has some great qualities and it has some things that really may not work for you and whether it's the right one for you or not kind of just depends on exactly what you're seeking to accomplish so starting from the top 15,000 btu centralized air but these are all 30 amp nope sorry these are 50 amp service by default which means if you want to add a second air up in the bedroom it's all prepped and ready to do that they've cleaned up the decor a little bit this year um, added some nice contrast, and they got rid of that marine woven stuff in the slide flooring. Keystone's doing that a, a lot. Um, I like it when the slide and the main floor match. Keystone does look to have opted for a little bit shorter kind of carpetless flap hanging off the end of that slide. And there's a plus minus to that. The downside is it makes the slide look like it's levitating like David Blaine doing a street magic trick. The positive side is that means that uh, the, the slide flap that hangs down doesn't get like smashed against things like that kitchen counter down there when it retracts and doesn't get like curled up and bunched up over in the corner so it just sort of depends on which poison i don't know you like to pick this rv does offer some excellent countertop prep space and it sounds like i'm passing gas if you're listening very closely i'm sitting on the armrest of the sofa and it's just making you know like when the ketchup bottle makes that farty sound I am way too much of a child not to laugh at that literally every single time. I don't care. I don't care. If we're sitting around the table, if the ketchup bottle farts, every time I'll look at my daughter and go, Mom! It never fails to get a smile out of her face. And anything I can do to get a smile out of my daughter, man, it, just, it lights up my world. You know, it's like, it's it's more addictive than crack. I'm, I'm guessing I've never... Never tried it. <laughs> I've always been, I barely drink beer. All For all the joking I do about it, I don't really drink very much. Um, let's talk power outlets in the kitchen. You see you got some outlets over there against the wall. You don't really have any under overhead cabinets until you get over here by the entertainment because with an inch and a half laminated wall, you can't really mount a recessed uh, plug into the wall. And with your campsite window covers there, I, I don't know how that's you know, going to work otherwise. Now, when I said they cleaned up their decor, they added a little more contrast to the wood tones, but they got rid of the um, distress accent marks that kind of made sometimes the cabinetry look dirty, even when it was brand new. And as long as we're close to the Swan Lake uh, sink faucet right here, you see it does have that handy little extension cover to it. Now, back here, we will see in a minute, this does have a sliding pocket privacy door, so you can quarantine off those triple bunks. But Again, it is a triple bunk system. It does start with one all the way down on the floor. 
but again, that's a removable bunk mattress. So if you want to take that mattress and put it up top here, because we all know how comfy factory bedding is, right? He said with dripping sarcasm facetiously. You, you get what I'm, maybe you're picking up what I'm putting down there. Anyway, um, all the, well, the top two bunks will have windows. The bottom one does not because uh, what would be a window is potentially like a, uh, a, a cargo door. Now, your uh, top two bunks have uh, various power outlets like household and USB plugs over here on the side of this cabinet. The bottom bunk does have outlets, but they're over by the exterior, like, cargo door, basically. We'll come back and get all that storage over to... Ooh! Okay, one thing to consider, because again, I try to share good with bad and in between. The converter fuse box, you know, switch panel is back here in the bunk room, right down where Littles can reach it. So... If you have littles with curious fingers, you're going to really want to let them know to stay away from that thing. The other thing that I'm kind of thinking about that is when the slide closes, you're going to lose access to the, the, the bunk room. So if you happen to pop a fuse, you're going to have to crawl in through the outside baggage compartment to replace that fuse. Maybe not the end of the world, certainly not fun, and depending on your personal size and stature, that might be a bit of a project that you don't really feel like doing. So you may want to teach your kids about replacing 12-volt blade fuses. <laughs> the more you know, right? So this TV's in a weird spot because it's straight across from the dining. But if you notice, the TV can also pivot around. It can actually pivot both ways very nicely. In this kitchen, one of the benefits of this design, it provides some serious storage space. Like, the RV doesn't have one thing I can point at and go, that's a pantry. But I don't think it's lacking for storage. And I like how they even included some storage back there in that little private bunk room. Uh, 10 plus cubic foot, 12 volt DC compressor fridge, by the way. And I will tell you, I am not a big fan of this dinette. I don't, I don't have anything against dinettes myself, but it is actually not what I call a true U dinette. It's not like one of those big seven foot wraparound dinettes. So adults are constantly bashing your knees if you sit down at that table. Little kids are gonna get along just fine, but adults, you may wanna just take your dinner plate over and sit at the couch and do like a little uh, you know, lap dinner kind of situation thing. The height of bed sleeper sofa over there, maximizing your sleeping. Like, if you think about it, if you have two people on the front bed, one on each bunk, and then dinette and sofa, you've got sleeping for seven in here. And if you start doubling up uh, the, the smaller spaces, I think you could have, like, what, 12? Now, when you are potentially sleeping 12 people, you're probably bringing an extra van just at like a 15 passenger van or whatever, just to get everybody transported. And with seven to 12 people, this RV does have a single bathroom. So juggling bathroom time and um, holding tank capacities are a thing you're gonna wanna consider. I do like that they include that privacy shade. And again, I, I hope, you know, it, a lot of what I've said today sounds kind of negative. I'm just trying to be real about it because let's, let's again, let's be frank, but don't call me Shirley. Um, <laughs> the, uh, you know, camping's super fun, but it's not the least expensive way to spend your day. So let's make sure we're getting your second camper the first time. That's my goal. Now back here, you've got the, uh, tankless on demand water heater controls, which is handy if you're going to have back to back to back showers, which I'd recommend park hookups for that for holding tank reasons. Uh, but this RV's great capacity is going to sound pretty good because you've got one gray tank dedicated to the bathroom and then one to the kitchen, if, if I'm not mistaken. And I think that's correct. Anyway, uh, what are we looking at over there? This loose hardware. Did they forget to install it? No. Some manufacturers will do things like, uh, ship your toilet paper roller loose so that you can put it where you want. And when we're talking about toilets and things being loose, that doesn't exactly roll off the tongue very beautifully uh but you know here we are mom you know <laughs> porcelain foot flush stool and when you slide that privacy door out of the way you do have some pretty decent space here and i do prefer the towel bar that they're using over just towel hooks it is the uh the, the smaller four inch fan here in this bathroom but i do really like the headroom that cougars uh even here in the sport series give us in the upper deck and something i don't know that everybody realizes like this little ring right here is mostly designed to uh just kind of keep the um the hose from getting out of control 
but you can drop it down like that if it makes it easier for one of the littles to uh, take a shower. Uh, I don't know that everybody realizes that. I don't know if I've ever shown that on camera once before. A little pro tip for you there from Uncle Josh. Now, Keystone's excellent about uh, fully framing in their doors. They frame out a lot of interior walls versus just popping up some wall panels. Not every manufacturer does that, and it really kind of depends on how the specific RV is engineered, whether you can or can't do that. You haven't seen a lot of USB plugs, but they do put uh, some by your sleeping zones, which I think is minimal, but enough. Because if you think about it, where you want to charge your phone at the end of the night or on a rainy day, if the kids are just sitting in their bunks, uh, you know, passing some time. Because like on a rainy day, if I'm camping, we either go somewhere like we'll play Monopoly, but we do allow ourselves like a little bit of individual uh, kind of just lounging decompression time. So um, that's my family. Maybe that's not yours. I don't know. Maybe that's not how you roll. I'm not exactly sure. Um, what was I getting ready to show you? I... My train of thought just went off the rails. So I tell you what, let's just get back on track here. Uh, we're doing a lot of um, train-related phrasings today. Let's take a look in here. When you crank that open, you're like, sweet storage, but it does not have any kind of overhead struts or anything like that. It doesn't have that Bob Seger strut about it by any means. The bed does, though. The bed's easy lift, and across from the bed is a really nice chunk of dresser space and hanging storage for the, uh, you know, probably the owners of the RV over here. Um, it doesn't have any sort of washer dryer accommodations. They just don't do that here in the sport series. They will do that in some of the other Cougars where they have the opportunity. Straight across from the bed, you got yourself some TV hookups, a little switch there for the lighting. And that's something else I didn't mention. We walked right past it. Most of your Cougars have an in-command kind of touchscreen, Bluetooth, blah, 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 smart system. This just has switches and these switches are much better than when you used to mouth off to your grandma and she'd tell you to walk over to that wood line there and pick your switch if you know <laughs> you know and like i mentioned with the slide closed you're losing the bunk room so keep that in mind uh we already kind of talked about all that now the bathroom and the front bedroom those are readily accessible um you know right off the hallway where basically i'm standing now if you need to stop and make a whole bunch of you know diablo sandwiches and grab some dr peppers the good news is your kitchen is readily accessible and you can get to the fridge so it has some travel stop function not the best for travel stay over and we have a beautiful day going on here today. Once that sun came out, man, it's actually shaping up to be nice. Not too bad considering it's supposed to rain all day. Sometimes it's not all bad when the weather person gets it wrong. Am I right? <laughs> so let's talk about the good and the bad. Um, I don't know if this is good or bad. It's just news. I do still recommend a three-quarter ton pickup. Generally speaking, due to the hitch weight versus the payload rating uh, that most half tons are going to carry. Because by the time you load this with cargo and you load up your family, especially with as many people as this could potentially sleep, I think the truck's payload is going to be absolutely smoked. Now up top there, you've got their new 220-watt uh, solar package. The, the Solar Flex Suite of Solar Solutions. That was some awesome alliteration that I did not plan. Love it. Um, those, uh, have all gotten better. There are like every single panel that Keystone's using this year is 10% bigger than it was last year, but this is their smallest, most basic package, the 220 watt system. Last year, it only came with a 15 amp controller. It was a nice Victron controller, but it was small. You couldn't expand much on it. Uh, this year it's a 30 amp controller standard from the factory. So if you do want to bulk up on this a little bit without having to go massive in debt doing it, that's something that you can accomplish here. Uh, the awning, you saw that is a nicely sized big power awning on this sucker. So if you are going to spend some serious time outside under your patio, uh, you've got plenty of room to do it. Now the steps, I, I suppose, are technically in the way, but what are you, I don't know, what are you going to do about that? Uh, different from the rest of the Cougars, these have uh, prep for a telescopic removable ladder. Does not include a factory ladder, but typically that's something you can get off like, I don't know, Amazon. We've got them usually in our, our part shop, stuff like that. Uh, they are using cable driven slides, by the way, on these Cougars. Um, and uh, one of the benefits to that is it's lighter than a rack and pinion system, and it doesn't have a ram bar that goes through the chassis, which creates 
uh, a potential flex point in your the foundation of the RV, and it also doesn't fight with holding tank sizes. But if you ask most people, most people who have had multiple slide systems will tend to prefer rack and pinion for um, peace of mind and reliability. So just, again, being real about what to expect here. Uh, they're still doing their 3,000 pound towing package on this uh, with those little safety chain hooks and the four-way wiring harness, which is nice. You have reverse travel lighting on here and uh, they do have backup camera mounts. Now, the thing is, if an RV doesn't have a backup camera mount, does that mean you can't put a camera on it? No, it doesn't mean that at all. Frankly, it's not any harder to put a camera on an RV that is prepped or not prepped. It's kind of just a neat little sort of marketing thing. Anyway, um, these are power front leveling jacks. They're power rear stabilizers, but the Sport Series does not feature the full auto uh, leveling system that the, uh, the bigger cat cougars will. Uh, you also saw that you have that stinky slinky like sewer hose holder right there. And then again, this can be a bunk or it could be cargo. It's a bunk cargo space, which is nerdism number one, two, three, carry the one, 37 if you're uh, keeping score. And when I just open this up, it kind of just looks like the RV floor. But remember, that actually is a bunk mattress. And now that we're over here, an easier view of the fact that you have uh, power outlets and lighting for the lower bed, it's positioned differently from uh, the top two beds. Because again, that bottom layer right there can serve a couple different purposes. So it's kind of important to sort of uh, remember the differentiation there. The Sport Series does use that glass door, I think maybe just to give it a little bit of pizzazz more than uh, anything, uh, if I had to estimate. Uh, there is a gas grill cooker hooker right down below here. You can actually see, you see that little yellow propane stopper here. Let me actually get you down here so you can see it. Sorry. Ugh. I'm just feeling fat and I didn't feel like bending over today. You ever have those days? I'm guessing I'm not the only one. I'm just blah. Of course, I haven't exactly been doing anything about it, so I don't know that I really have too much of a right to complain. Um, these are also still inverter prepped. You see that yellow sticker on that outlet over there on the left? Any of the outlets, that, if you go back through the video, uh, look for those. Sometimes they're hidden like behind a TV. Those are all prepped and ready. If you want to add an inverter to the RV, you can run them off battery power. Which if we teleport over here to the other side of that pass-through compartment, you can see where that is all located. So it's a fully enclosed privatized docking center with a hot cold uh, outside utility shower built right into it there. And I like how they do put that partition wall in just in case you got a little bit of water spritzing around. It kind of keeps it contained. Uh, tankless on-demand water heater. This does have, oh shoot, I couldn't remember if it was one or two. It is two sewer hookups. You've got one in front of the tires, one in the back. The back would be the kitchen gray. The front would be the bathroom uh, black and gray and it looks like the uh, the rear kitchen gray tanks uh, gate valve is enclosed in the underbelly where it's heated and protected kind of like these are enclosed up here uh, the pole is obviously back there thankfully that rear gray pole is not underneath the um oh what do I want to say uh, the slide out now you notice how they were still using 30 pound propane tanks right there when you start getting into something a little more uh, price and budget sensitive, a lot of manufacturers will start dropping down to 20s, which, I don't know, historically you just don't see a lot of in fifth wheels. And I've got a bad habit of forgetting this, but I wanted to open this front compartment here for a couple reasons. One, we get to get right up close and personal to the drunken uncle leash latch in the bottom left. But two, when you get inside here, that's where your spare tire is stored. Because otherwise, you're looking at this, you're like, wait a minute, it doesn't come with a spare tire? Uh, it also does not have factory standard batteries. Keystone was doing that the last couple years, but just because they were factory standard doesn't mean they were free. The batteries they were including was adding about an extra $1,800 per trailer, and not everybody needed $1,800 worth of batteries. But if you need $1,800 worth of batteries, we can still assist you with that stuff, but now you're not really like forced into it. Now, you've got a couple different disconnects going on. That is your giggy box. That's your like hard battery disconnect. But up top next to your charge controller, ooh, let me get that leveling bar out of the way. You've got another disconnect for the solar package so that uh, if the RV's just in storage with the batteries pulled off, you're not accidentally nuking the charge controller. And you see that they are still prepped and ready for the, uh, the TPMS system that you could slap on here. I've used one of those, pretty cool. So let me know what you think of these. Where did they nail it? Where did they fail it? On this more budget-focused Cougar series. And if you want more fancy widgets and whiz-bangs, they certainly have that in what they call their Cougar Half-Ton series. Although, I don't 
generally recommend towing those with a half ton. Cougar half ton is the name of it, not necessarily a recommendation from my point of view, but that's just my nerdy perspective. I'd love to hear from yours, and of course, I'll leave you a link in the video description to check for pricing and availability. Also for this one's sister, if you check our website, and we happen to be sold out of Cougar 2700s, check our website for the Arcadia 27 SBH. Arcadia and Cougar aren't clones, they're sisters, but Arcadia said, we like what you're doing in the sport series, we're gonna do it too and call it Select. So that's coming. So now you have more opportunities to take one of these home and maybe that means we have a store closer to you with one of these in stock and less driving for you. And it doesn't matter which store you uh, pick with Bish's RV, every store treats you like home if you need pieces, parts, service, whatever the case. We even winterize your RV for you at no cost every year. So when you're ready, we're ready. And until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping everyone. I'd like to introduce you to today's special guest. This is Charlotte, and apparently she is keeping us safe from malaria. She's not hurting anything, so I'm just gonna let her keep on living her best life.